Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Kangaroo here. I am back once again for my long break of not doing stuff, I guess you could call it. Uh, back again. Hopefully, I will be back to uploading videos a lot more than I usually do. Um, before we start off today with this Photoshop tutorial, I would just uh, ask you guys to head on over to www.youtube.com slash stereo breed media. There will be a link in the description. This is my secondary channel for my production company that I started uh, so I will be posting all my work on here um, for cinematography and everything my production company does but I'll also be posting tutorials on photography cameras after effects cinematography tips lighting etc etc um, anyhow if you guys could do that I would love you forever uh, let's go ahead and get to it so what we're doing today is we are going to turn this picture into this kind of color correction. It's kind of like a retro-y color grade where the reds and the highlights are really pushed up and the greens and blues are really pushed up in the shadows. Um, it gives this kind of effect for a color grade and yeah uh, we're just going to show you how to do this one today and hopefully there will be a lot more tutorials soon so let's go ahead and get started I'm just gonna go ahead and exit out of this let's start from scratch let's find this image real quick there it is this is our beginning image okay so first thing I usually do with all of uh, the photos I edit unless I edit them out in Lightroom uh, but I'll edit this one out in Photoshop just because I want like really defined settings for color grading uh, Lightroom I say it's kinda limited um, as far as editing a single image goes, if you want to edit a lot of images at a time, light room is usually my way to go. But if I just want to do this one and do it right the way I want it, color graded, then that's how we're going to do it. Anyhow, I usually start off by adding three adjustment layers, a hue and saturation first, a levels second, and a curves third. Um, switch over to the hue and saturation so the first thing we're gonna do actually is color correct and then we're gonna do the color grade the difference between the two is color correct is actually preparing your image for a color grade and color grade is an actual stylized look um, that can be noticed so usually I start off with hue and saturation and drop the saturation down to roughly about half so it gets this nice flat look um, true super flat for a photographer's camera should be set pre but in this one it wasn't available on the camera um, this is a photo also taken by Mary Say so Mary Say Mary C and uh, yeah definitely check out her work when you get the chance um, let's hop on over to the curves next we're gonna skip the levels for now and I'll tell you why in a second uh, jump over to the curves and we're going to do the contrast. Um, to do a contrast I basically do an S curve so drop the shadows a little bit and up the highlights a little bit so you make this nice S curve. Alright this right now I would say in my opinion now this is my opinion is too the, 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 the blacks are too crushed and the highlights are too blown out so let's bring this back up a little bit and Bring that down just a tad bit. Okay, so now once you got your contrast pretty close to where you want it, then you go to your levels. And this is to finish up adjusting the exposure. This is how I adjust my exposure or my gain uh, to kind of get the overall brightness of the image. So you got your contrast set, now you just need to find a really good brightness in there. So this is kind of good. Now we're going to get to the color grading. And for color grading, 95% uh, of the time I will use curves because it's so powerful just from what you could do in it. Um, pop down this RGB menu and RGB uh, affects all the colors and now you, um, you can choose subsections. So first thing I usually start off with red. Um, the skin tone of humans are red so and they're in the highlight section so if you really want to separate the skin tones from the background you usually just pump up reds in the highlights and then drop the reds in the shadows so it creates a nice little contrast. Um, make sure you don't go too far down because if you go too far down it kind of like loses the look 
we're going for. Um, so I'm going to up the reds a little bit more, drop these a little bit more, and just kind of compensate and just work around with it a little bit. Make sure you don't do anything too overboard. Okay, that's looking about good. Then the next one I usually hop over to is blue. And blue, I pump up for this color grade, pump up the blue in the shadows, and then drop the blue in the highlights to give it like a yellow highlight, but pump in the blue in the shadows. So somewhere around right there, it's looking good. And the last one you're probably gonna notice about is green. I don't really like green, green is stupid. I don't like using it at all in the curves because, and here's why. You can do something so little and it can make such a drastic change. So if I move it down that much, right there, just that much, look how drastic and I just don't think that looks good. So, you know, first and second, like that's how much of a drastic move that one little line made. And now I'm in the levels. <laughs> And for some reason, all my color corrections are gone. Oh well, let's pump these back up real quick. Do this really quick. Let's catch back up. I think I hit the undo key a little bit too many times. Anyhow, you just want to play with these till you get about the right setting. Make sure you're checking yourself after every maybe two or three steps to make sure you're not going overboard with any of these. Levels actually, make sure. Yep, okay, that's looking good. Um, two more things before I'm done with this image. One, I want to crop it to like most of the photography I do is for online, so I don't actually need to print it, so we can have some odd crops or in this case, widescreen. Um, it gives that more cinematic feel if you do a widescreen crop like this. Um, and then the very last thing to do is put on our watermark, which you should have pre-saved somewhere. If you don't, you should definitely do it because it makes it easy. I'm going to drag that over to the other screen and just drag it on here. And there we are. I'm going to bring this below all the color corrections because I like the logo to kind of match with the picture as much as it can. Scale this down a bit, put it up there, and drop the opacity. And bam, that is our finished image. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. There will be a lot more coming soon, I promise, um, in a lot of different areas besides Photoshop. Once again, remember to go to youtube.com slash stereobreedmedia, link in the description, subscribe there because that is my second account. Um, also credit to Mary C for the photography and the picture is of fresh money and if you would like to see them go follow them at Twitter at freshmoney717 and that'll be in the link or in, yeah, in the description box as well. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you later. Peace.